All right, thank you. Uh, hope you're able to see my screen and can see can can see your screen, right, Prashant? Yes, one. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you for confirmation. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you for joining with us today. Um, today our topic would be uh, generative AI for trailblazers. So unlock the future of artificial intelligence, which is AI. And uh, we'll quickly introduce ourselves. But before that, uh, this event, especially which we're uh, collaboratively doing with uh, one of the other group in India, which is Vijiwada Partner Group, along with Singapore Marketers Group. And we'll have some quick introduction about uh, ourselves. Uh, I'll just go through our introduction. So before that, I'm pretty sure that generative AI is one of the biggest hard topics for the current market. And this is one of the exciting topics always uh, that has been all over the news. Uh, and while most of us have heard about generative AI and maybe have played around when, you know, when we were working with ChatGPT and other open APIs, uh, the majority of the people don't understand the technology behind it. But today we would love to see, as we see generative AI becoming more and more part of our lives, we want to enable everyone so it can be a trail wizards. You're all powerful trial wizards in this incredible new world of generative AI. We will learn many and much more things about this topic today, right? Let's have a quick introduction about myself, myself and Intra, and I'm based in Singapore. Uh, I'm a Salesforce MVP, and I'm a two times marketing champion, and I lead Salesforce Singapore Marketers Group as well as Slack Community Group Leader in Singapore. You could follow me on LinkedIn, and uh, you could follow me on Twitter as well. So I'll quickly ask Prashant to introduce himself and then we can quick start the session. Uh, thanks so much, Fanny. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Prashant. So I'm a Salesforce marketing champion. I'm a technical lead and 90 times Salesforce certified consultant. I'm also a community group leader and trailblazer mentor. Thank you. Yeah, you could follow Prashant on LinkedIn, Twitter as well. And uh, you could say hi, hello. And uh, you can ask any, any questions on Salesforce and other platforms as well. Right. Thank you. So let's talk, come to our topic. Um, AI is not a new topic, right? You know, so we had uh, we're working when we when we are in our engineering or when we are in our graduations. So we always listen some buzz about AI. Uh, definitely, when I was ninety, we are, when we are in nineties or eighties or uh, you know twenties generation, we always thought about what AI can change. But AI definitely can change something someday, and uh, and the day come, uh, and we all aware of what's happening inside our ecosystem. Um, and of course, uh, this is not a new topic for trailblazers because the Salesforce platform has AI natively built in, which is Einstein. We have Einstein predictions, we have Einstein intelligence, we have nest best actions, nest best offers. So we have plenty of things, right? So when Salesforce launched Einstein in 2016, uh, it brought a data scientist to every organization to harness the predictive insights. And always it provides a lot of recommendations to work smarter and faster for every customer, right? Do you believe that today Einstein runs 1 trillion predictions every week? This is massive, massive, massive a lot. Because that recommendations, that recommendations will, will work smarter as well as it works faster as well. If you look at the first AI for a CRM, which we are launching Einstein at uh, 2013 or 2016, and uh, we always start, you know, you know, think through a process where, okay, this is our data scientist. This is our data predictive system. And it has low code, pro code kind of a thing. And it's available for every cloud, right? Sales cloud, service cloud, revenue cloud, or manufacturing, wherever it is. So it brings a lot of potential for every uh, customer. I'm not sure how many of them have raised Einstein predictions for uh, your day-to-day -day work, for predicting your case sentiments, predicting your churn analysis, correcting your CSATs for customers. So it brings a lot of driven insights for every company. To bring all together, you're already aware of it, a trial based DX. Um, recently, we had a big events in every sales force every year. Uh, one of the biggest events is trial based DX, especially for the developers. Salesforce announced Einstein GPT, which brings an incredible part of generative AI to the Salesforce platform. This innovation, this innovation works with the full power of Salesforce platform. From your trusted customer data and the Einstein GPT helps you, you know, generate a trusted content from CRM data and impose every experience across customer 360. It not only for you yourself, it only provides your customers and for your employees as well. When it comes to your emails, your messages, your articles, landing pages, even flows, 
Einstein is here to help and assist you in your role as an admin. It gives the best, the world's most trusted generative AI for enterprise. So this is the summer of artificial intelligence, which is AI, and there is so much innovation coming soon on the roadmap. And if you look at recently the sales GPTs, Slack GPT, Subway GPT, Commerce GPT, Marketing GPT. So it's been in a lot of innovators have been coming on a product base with the exciting announcement of Einstein GPT and all of the features coming soon. There is no better time to learn about generative AI. I wish everyone wants to focus on something about what is generative AI, how we could you know use a generative AI, generative AI, and how you will be able to use it. Okay, so we'll, let's talk about a couple of fundamentals. What is generative AI? and why it is so important. And we will see how we can unblock the feature of AI from a Einstein charge GPT perspective, right? So today we'll cover generative AI fundamentals. So we'll start with uh, what is generative AI, why it is so important, and let's start with defining a generative AI. A generative AI is a powerful technology that is talking the world by storm. And uh, this, is, this is something which which I've been hard about uh, when I'm working with uh, Google uh, for one of the biggest transformations, especially on um, AI models, NLP, NLP models. So hope you're aware of there's a TensorFlow. When I tested this TensorFlow a long way back 20, 2016 for designing one of the production system for uh, the biggest enterprise company. So that time I've heard about generative AI, which I've thought it, it gives a lot of deep learning algorithms which comes with NLP, NLM kind of a structure, natural language processing, natural language machine learning programs. So what it does is, so it, it, it brings a family of deep learning algorithms that can automatically create a new content such as your text, imagery, code, voice, and even video as well. I've seen many of the companies now has been generating a PowerPoint slides based on one single sentence. Imagine how big the generated AI is. So in order to generate this content, a generative algorithms, less patterns and features from massive amount of training data, which is required officially, of course, right? Because you have to, you know, that AI will bring all the powerful data across the systems of your uh, internet sources and all this stuff, and then it'll bring you the relevant content for you to personalize. That's a massive, right? So that's what the generative AI is very powerful that, that brings world by storm as well. Let's talk about what is generative AI, why this is a big, big storm has been coming into the picture. So what are all the building blocks behind this generative AI? You may have heard the terms machine learning, right? And you may have heard the terms of deep learning and generative AI before. But did you know deep learning is a type of machine learning? And generative AI is a type of deep learning. While these terms are sometimes used interchangeably, they are distinct types of AIs. So what happens is the machine learning leverages data to generate predictions. The more data we feed, the more data we feed into a machine learning system, the better it can predict. Isn't it true? Because you have plenty of data, then only you should be able to design your best predictions. Even when you look at your marketing cloud, when, when uh, Einstein marketing cloud has been generated, our, our send time optimization, our copy insights, our content insights. So, Einstein, you know, content Einstein, STO, Einstein, SEO. So we have plenty of things in marketing cloud stack already way back long marketing cloud, right? If you imagine, if you have a data, then only it give you the right predictions. It always brings the last 30 days because it requires at least 30 to 60 days of time to generate all the insights. So the fundamental concept that what brings out here is an open an API, which is a generative AI. That's what this machine learning does all this magic. Machine learning leverages the data to generate all the predictions. The more data we feed into a machine learning system, the better it can predict always. When it comes to the deep learning, deep learning is a type of machine learning that uses complex algorithms. It brings the best, best and best of complex algorithms, also known as neural network. This is where I'm coming from when I'm working with the TensorFlow. It brings, it connects a multiple, multiple bind of neural networks that that learn what, what we are entering the characters and what, what kind of a task that we are performing without explicitly programming step-by-step -step instructions because just a pure play, uh, you know, connecting ways of the neural networks. That's where the generative AI, it fits in here under deep learning concept. Because when you write something, so it goes and then bring a 
different kind of patterns and that patterns will explicitly program step-by-step -step instructions which can bring the results for you from the deep learning concept right so we have been interacting with these concepts in our daily lives if you look at uh you know if you look at autocomplete in search engine or on your mobile device but but when you go to your, your google chrome and then you're trying to search so it will bring all the results At the same time you know, uh, if you go to any other, if you go to your mobile and then you're trying to search in Bingo or any other browser, which can give you the relevant results because the entire search engine has been based on one of the algorithms. Every search engine has their own algorithm, which is designed in such a way to bring the relevant results for every customer. That's why we're all, you know, um, if you want to go and learn something or search something, we always prefer to have Google. We always prefer to have an Yahoo before. We always prefer to have some other internet browsers. But here, the generative AI takes deep learning a step further, and it gives it gives a, a better of each and every result that what we and it, it can accommodate as well the entire uh, entire family of the deep learning algorithm that can automatically create multiple uh, assets for us, which include your code, voice, videos, presentations, whatever, everything. So let's talk about. What are the foundation models? Let's talk about the LLMs. Uh, you should understand what is LLM, uh, the, the respective traditional deep learning methods uh, have plenty of millions of parameters versus the large language models, which is LLM, what we can calling as large language models, which is again a billions of parameters. So the traditional deep learning versus the large language models. So traditional deep learning method use smaller neural networks to solve your AI problems such as making predictions or recognize patterns. Generative AI is built upon large language models, which is nothing but a foundation models. It always took the foundations. While you're generating anything, you always stick with your foundation models, which are essential, very large neural networks. These neural networks include your billions of parameters. Even the tiny, small things also will consume your billions of parameters that interconnects your decision-making elements that collectively give rise to their capabilities. That representing your huge increase or traditional methods as well. That's where it, it's, I said, is a massive. If you look at, you know, while generative AI has been thrust into the spotlight, uh, thanks to the release of popular product like ChatGPT, uh, many of the roots and interactions of generative uh, and your conversations, uh, your, your AI has been, you know, hallmarks of all our digital lives for quite some time. For example, or for instance, consider how a search engine knows how to complete searches for you, right? So that's where it brings uh, a perfect, powerful model uh, that build on large language models. Ideally, which are essential to have your very large neural networks as well. So these neural networks are the billions of parameters, which you could, you know, always, when you build something, start with the basic uh, foundational models. That's how this generative AI works with the, you know, the large language models versus a traditional deep learning methods. So the rise of generative AI, there are three key contribute, contributing factors, especially um, when you work with anything, you need a data, you need a data for sure, the more data. So because when you always think about, okay, why, why generative AI having its inflection point now, why not 90s, why not 20s, or why not, you know, uh, 2020 or 21 or sometimes, why now? So there are three contributing groups here, one with more data, the other one with better algorithms, compute power. On a day by day, our generation, when, when the generation comes to the picture, like you know, in our generation, so we always have to learn about our mathematics starting from one to 20 tables. When you are powerful at 20 tables, you are literally you know, a good mathematician to do all your uh, trigonometry in other areas, right? But when you look at uh, a different kind of a people where they start their mathematics or 20 table complete at age of, uh, or at the class of seventh or eighth class. So that brings a difference between a person who knows 20 tables at uh, age one or, or age three, or a person who learns tables at age 20. So we are in the age of uh, a generative AI, which brings a powerful uh, methods. We have internet access. We have, you know, we have large, huge server access. We have, everywhere in, inside our, our single pocket. Uh, that's where these three rise also will be dependent upon this key contributors. So more data, 
there's a huge amount of data that is available today. Number one, the number two is we have better deep learning algorithms have been developed that discover patterns within the large amounts of data. Uh, that's what we're calling as a better algorithm. And we have a large amounts of available compute power, make it possible process the sheet amount of data required for generative AI. If you look at different services now, now Salesforce have been in, in, inside Salesforce, we, are, we only have our own uh, data centers initially, uh, which is very less three to four data centers. Now with the concept of Hyperforce, now we have extended our routes to a different data centers, which customer can, you know, can happily purchase Salesforce Augs and then can trust compliance and uh, which which meets the regularity in all the aspects. That's where the Hyperforce comes into the picture. So, so day by day, we are using a compute power, you know, from way back our 20s to now, uh, our servers to the Hyperforce. So we're moving out. Uh, we're moving the better customer experience always of moving out to uh, make available of your compute power make it possible the process to share amount of data that requires for uh, your different customers by using a generative AI. So that's where the race will always be happening. Uh, these are all the three key contributing factors which you would understand from a generative AI perspective. When it comes to your, you know, we always thought about uh, why it's now, why it's important. Uh, so we have covered what generative AI is. Now let's talk about why it's so important. Generally, uh, our generative AI is uh, creating opportunities for businesses. Of course, it is does. It does all the way because that's where nowadays businesses are more interested to, you know, uh, do. They wanted to reduce staff and then use a lot of systems to, you know, uh, generate the complex algorithms. Using complex algorithms, they want to generate some personalized content and always. In an IT survey, 67% of IT leaders noted that prioritizing generative AI in the next six months. That's really true. Because the businesses are excited about the huge potential for generative AI, this makes it even more important that as a trial basis, we understand the underlying technology and how it might transform the way business operates so we can bring the power of AI to our core companies. Right? So business are always excited. They're always excited, you know. So they always ask trial basis. Okay, uh, so we are really excited about the potential to drive efficiency and the productivity with the help of generative AI. With the same lines, Interacting with generative AI for the first time can be mind blowing. It, it has a mind blowing experience for everyone because it helps you for everyone. It helps you for everything. It'll help you, you to generate everything from your writing poems in the style of pirate to create email copywriting to even generate lines of code. Right? So it's very critical to know it's responsible with the generative AI. So if you look at a couple of uh, products that what we have been launching, you know, as a part of an Einstein charge GPT for Salesforce. Uh, if you look at Slack, uh, Slack GPT, you know, that, that automatically generates a kind of recommendations from, from a workflow, the Slack develops have been designed. So at the same time, we have a sales cloud, service cloud, marketing chat GPT, commerce chat GPT. So it fundamentally brings all these products, which brings out a lot of specific use cases and the features that what essentially can leverage by the customers to bring the more value additions, to bring the right touch points, which increase our ROI and always, right? So that's where the IT leaders are more focusing on prioritizing their generative AI in the next six months. And they're so exciting about the huge potential for generative AI. And that makes sense for every, every person. And we, as a trial basis, who are working with all the companies. I've been, I've been really that the, lay, the same level of excitement where we can bring and where we understand the underlying technology of how we might transform the way business operates and how we could generate or bring other ideas uh, to up and running on this generative AI. Yeah. Let's talk about some couple of principles. Uh, there are four principles that you could use generative AI responsibly. Uh, number one, always trust. Trust. Trust is always one of the factors with Salesforce. And uh, to start with the core principles, trust, security, accuracy, and empowerment. So when it comes to the trust, make it clear when content is AI generated. Follow your company's guidelines around usage. So it's always, it's always need to have, these are all the four fundamental core principles that if you want to start developing any AI generative application or AI generative, or want to leverage AI generative tools, make sure it should be always start with your uh, privacy, security, and compliance kind of a thing. So number one is trust. The number one two is security. Protect personally, PII data, personally identifiable information, and proprietary company information. So don't put 
any information at your text subject or anything that you want to search with because there are two fundamental ways that you could grab if you want to leverage any third party tools like chart gpt4 chart gpt3.5 or chart gpt uh, uh, there is a chart gpt uh, one more new edition came like uh, chart gpt plus or something so when you purchase any edition normally what people does is people directly leverage the api of open ai of chart gpt to bring the you know api stuff into sale into your salesforce platforms or some of the customers or some of the hardcore developers what that does is they're going to build a platform they're going to build an application which is a node.js or any other platform they build a chatbot let's take an example they build a chatbot using open ai in the form of node.js application they build a complete application with the using open ai as their uh as their you know api and they build an entire application and they're deploying their entire application to google gcp engine or microsoft or any other amazon so they could leverage their hosting platform somewhere so when it comes to you know so at the same time when companies wanted to use this tool that generated or designed by your developers they always have you know trust in them trust and security uh which makes an impact right because when they're trying to search something on uh bringing because uh you have to teach you have to learn the data of entire your uh, systems so when you want to write uh bring me my top 10 potential accounts then it automatically brings the data right so it always comes with whether this data has been leveraging by third party person who already brought ipa so that's where it comes into the picture so we should always make it to uh you know protect our pi data when designing such an applications at the same time find your proprietary company information that not to make false statements or send this information back to the third party companies then the most number accuracy that's where every every people let's take example sales or any other customers they want to get the accuracy generative kind of an ideas always so they always review and revise the generated content to ensure accuracy that's what most important factor so other principle is empowerment uh using ai uh it's one of the assistant to supercharge your capabilities it always gives a lot of empowerment for you to grow individually as well as uh, as well as your your personal goals as well as your company goals as well so that's gives a lot of potential four principles which is trust security accuracy and empowerment and let's talk about some common concerns about uh, auto generative uh, the about uh, generative ai so always there are common concerns when i talked about uh, last few seconds back so the trust security you know and and we have spoofing we have sustainability model with any new technology not only this uh, when we build any application so we have to run through uh, with csoc securities compliance we have to run through different departments for running the ovasp standards so you have to do plenty of things in order to pass application security review from any of your application or any of your app to be deployed to live for any enterprise companies with any technology comes with risk so how can you approach an ai understanding its limitations and common concerns so here are a few of the main concerns with generative ai hallucinations generative ai is a form of prediction and sometimes predictions are wrong we can't say that it's 100 percent right because it's an ai it's not a human generative ai's incorrect responses are also known as hallucinations that's what the term in a generative ai uh, perspective with any ai generated text it's super important to review the content and ensure that it is accurate and correct number one number two data security you always protect pi data and you have to always protect your proprietary company information when using ai services trust is critical factor of course your security team won't allow you to deploy this application until they satisfy all the security until until they pass all the security elements don't worry none of the teams haven't go live with uh, conducting the security conducting security comes with a lot of a uh, lot of regulations you have to pass every regulation in order to deploy your application to go live the next thing uh if you look at your uh plagiarism so you know large language models the concept of large language models and ai models for image generation are typically trained on publicly available data right because when you look at uh nowadays in any movie or something or uh, uh, you look at you know so it automatically scans your face imaginary and it provides the data automatically okay who is this person so based on your eye so what is your first name last name and session number and all this data right so that is a possibility that's a model will learn a style and replicate that style as well so that's one of the common concerns as well 
really not sure how that really is going to be make it for whether it will whether it will replicate your style, whether it replace your entire uh, data. So that's one of the common concern users spoke with. It's always easier than ever to create a believable online profile, complete with an AI generated pictures. There are some fake users like this can interact with real users, right? So, I mean, other than fake users in a very realistic way, ideally. So that makes me hard for businesses to identify bot network that promote their own bot content. Uh, you know, everyone who designed the bot, they use some captcha, they use some different relevant mechanisms to stop spoofing from a user sending perspective. Uh, we always believe that, okay, this is an online profile and we always believe that, okay, this is a perfect data. But we're not sure how these hackers have been coming into it and then spoofing all this, your uh, online forms and then make them make your life so concerned about uh, these kind of things. So it's one of the particular concern about user spoofing. Next important thing is sustainability. So sustainability, uh, you always know the computing power, right? So the computing power required to train AI models is immense because it's immense because it requires a plenty of data, plenty of servers, plenty of systems. And the processors doing the math require a lot of actual power to run. As models get bigger, as models get bigger, so do their carbon footprint. Fortunately, once a model is trained, it takes relatively little power to process request. That's a good thing, actually. And renewable energy is expanding almost as fast as their adoption, right? So it's key factor. One of the common concerns is sustainability as well. And uh, so if you want to learn more about generative AI, check out the trial mix linked here, which includes valuable resources and content. Uh, just trial, just type with sports.co slash AI skills quest. So it's one of the quests where I want uh, everyone to learn about uh, what is this common concerns and you can see plenty of information as well. Let's go to the next thing. So uh, we came to the third agenda, which is how we should unlock the future of AI. Yes, there are three, some there are some biggest three steps to unlock the future of AI. There are three key steps to be an AI-minded admin. Number one, stay up to date on Salesforce AI. Number two, learn generative AI fundamentals. Number three, get ready for data-centric AI as we are here, right? So that's the most three key steps to unlock the future of AI. So just start learning it and then find out the best um, things today and then learn something big and then make a step for your empowerment as well. Let's start with how we can understand the prompt engineering. Uh, this is something which you have to understand. So recently Salesforce has been introducing a prompt, uh, an Einstein prompt. So you could see more number of things. What does prompt does? You do not have to wait uh, for the Salesforce Generative AI features beta to get hands-on with Generative AI. You can start using free Generative AI tools today. So the first thing is you can do, the first thing you can do is to understand the prompt engineering. The prompts are how you interact with Generative AI. That's all the prompt engineering is. You know, the natural language prompts are the input used to prompt the generated responses. So that is one of the, that that's, that's what we're calling as prompts. So you always experiment with tools such as Google Bird and OpenAI ChatGPT, right? And you always go with TensorFlow for Google's uh, for learning your NLP, your natural language processing models, and all this stuff. You always have familiarize yourself with the technology and start to identify places where AI can assist you. And you, if you have never interacted with these kind of tools before, uh, there are some of the steps which has been given here, and you can try as well. So what you can do is some of the sample prompts are you can write a friendly email text. When a contact gets converted to an opportunity, and you could write a SQL statement that shows me users with API access, and you could give some five slogans for an onboarding campaign for the new Salesforce users with my financial company, and of course you could write a poem about how Friday is the best day of the week as well. So there are some of the prompts which you could try it out. Um, so always follow your company security policies. Always to try something out with generative AI tools. This is most most important thing. So you always experiment and familiarize yourself with generative AI, but do not forget the biggest statement. Always follow your company security policies when using generative AI tools. So if anyone haven't heard about this prompt, uh, just go and then uh, search with uh, Salesforce Einstein prompt or something. So you'll get to know what how the prompt has been generated. Since currently beta, uh, the feature is in beta, but they could span up one of the tool and then you could try to check it out as well. 
they could try maybe some of the free tools like ChatGPT, OpenAI, uh, Google's Bard, or then Google's Tensor as well. So we come to the end of the session. So let's talk about what all some of the tips uh, for an expert prompt engineering. So the three tips that we would love to give from an expert prompt engineering would be, uh, if you're already familiar with these tools and exploring more ways to use generative AI, here are some of the tips for prompts to that will help you written the best responses from these tools. When coming up with our own prompts, uh, follow these three tips. Number one, provide context. Provide context. Always ground generative AI prompt. Because if you look at uh, the context at what you would love to provide, which always should be a, a ground generative AI prompt in your own knowledge to provide important context. Consider the difference in response between asking ChatGPT to write email versus write an onboarding email for a new Salesforce user at a financial service company, which prompts you think always to provide the most valuable response. That's one of the key factor. The number two piece, be security minded always. Do not put any confidential company information or data into public generative AI tool. As I said initially, don't write saying that, uh, so my friend's email ID is on, so and the phone number is on, so to generate some good email or subject line, something like that. Confidentiality, confidential information can include source code, customer information, deal information. Always follow company security policies when working with generative AI tools. Most, most important. The third and three, which always review and revise generative AI output to ensure accuracy, never deploy solution generated by AI directly into production without testing and validations and to pass a security. Always three steps. Testing, validating, and security review, three. So don't deploy any generative AI application to production directly without doing all this. If you are working with a text, always ensure you review and revise to avoid copyright, in fact, uh, copyright information. And uh, and better, not the best. You do not want to unintentionally, you know, uh, spoof through a public generative AI tools, right? So always don't uh, caught behind that what you're doing it because your security team always watching you on what's happening, what's doing it, all the stuff. So make sure we should be more prompt in order to leveraging an AI. If you leverage AI in a right way, it bring you the perfect revenues, perfect results. But if you leverage in a wrong way, so it will it will take you out and then uh, it makes you uh, mix and match kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, these are all some of the three tips, uh, three tips for expert prompt engineering. And uh, yeah, so this is how we could, uh, of course you have learned something on uh, generative AI today. And that's all for our session today. Uh, We've learned many about generative AI, uh, why it's important for trial blazers and how you could unlock the future of AI today. Uh, to learn more about these topics, you can check out the trial mix link here. It, includes, uh, it always includes key resources to help uh, you to drive deeper into these fundamental AI concepts. And uh, so there is a trial blazer quest. The skill, cast has, the skill quest has been given, uh, AI skills quest. Go and then learn on the open AI, uh, generative AI, and uh, many other tools. I'm pretty sure that uh, the, the generations have been going on and on. So we should be, you know, upskill ourselves with the new platforms. Uh, not sure. Now we are 10 developers. Maybe in the next generation, only two developers are working on. The rest eight developers working on AI. Yeah. So the AI can does all the job of us. But but of course, as I said, whatever the positives we learn from AI, there are negatives as well. So we always trust ourselves and then be uh, friend forward for learning something new and then keep upgrade all the stuff. Yeah. Thank you uh, for joining. Have a great rest of your day. And any questions, I'll happy to help you out as well. Thank you. I'll stop share. And if any questions, I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you. Uh, cannot talk. OK, let me unmute. Uh, okay, let me unmute. Uh, uh, who's asking question? Hey, funny. Hi. Thanks yes, for the great session here. Thank you. Yeah. So I had a quick question on uh, generative AI and how 
it will impact the Salesforce sandstone because Salesforce sandstone also does the same thing. Mm -hmm. I know it is it is a machine learning Salesforce sandstone, but it uses internally. Yeah, and I just wanted to understand the impact of generative AI on uh, Salesforce sandstone for that matter. Uh, impact of generative AI in terms of uh, as I as I've told. Uh, it's always, you know, uh, when you look at uh, generative AI, it has a potential to significantly impact the business world, offering increased productivity, efficiency, and opportunities for innovation, right? So if you look at understanding all the different concepts of generative AI and the key applications, businesses can leverage this technology to achieve their goals. But there are always, as I said, there are positive things. And always, there is a significant impact of generative AI for Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce is designing the entire generative AI uh, using the chart GPT uh, open APIs and they're, you know, designed the complete uh, Einstein products. Uh, if you look at sales of this marketing Slack, they've designed the products using open AI and then they deploy it into our own, our own hyperforce and they deploy the entire stuff into our own data cloud. And if you look at from a security standpoint, we were very safe. Number one, the security stand because if you look at all our Salesforce data sitting on Salesforce databases only. So if anything that you generated from our own applications, it's only generated within our sales GPT, service GPT, or commerce GPT because the data sitting inside and it's not going outside anywhere. That's number one, uh, the most important factor. Uh, people always think that, right? Uh, when you look at generative AI now, I always said like, you know, people entering some topics about generate the most top five accounts revenue, generate, the top negative sentiment cases will bring the results but the good thing in salesforce charge video is uh, the data will not go outside everything is sits in inside only pretty much i'm not seeing anything on the negative side because that's where the product has been built for salesforce of all these cbd right did it answers your question Thanks, Ashish. And from a security standpoint also, we are very safe, especially in Salesforce, because if any of your internal developer is very is one of the super developer, leveraging third-party open API and then building something on Salesforce, then that's a problem. But if you're using your own Salesforce designed, everything that Salesforce designed for you on a product, and then they're deploying our their products into our Hyperforce and then using data cloud principles, and then we could use it very efficiently because fully trusted, very compliant. Everything is everything is completely sustainable on this aspect. Is there any specific trial heads do you recommend for marketing GPT AI? Uh, Shiva, currently, um, I think there's only one. Uh, the trial heads have not been come for marketing GPT or anything, sales of or Currently, the open AI is the only one. The trial head quests that have been given in the link, that's the only one, Shiva. Any other questions? Can we expecting any new domain specific AI tool around sales and service in upcoming as really Exactly. So we're all looking forward for Dreamforce. Uh, Gaurav, 100% sure that uh, Dreamforce is a key. Uh, yeah, as you know, right, every Dreamforce, there is something is going to be introduced and releasing. I'm 100% sure that uh, all these four sales of his chart, customer commerce, and all this is going to be go live on the dream ports. That's what I'm expecting for. So let's hope for the best in the next dream ports. Coming dream ports, we'll see all this in life. <laughs> yeah, this common and yeah, because that's data cloud is something that we're all talking about it. Uh, yeah, pretty sure you could hard many on the data cloud side. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, Steve? All right, team. Thank you for joining today. Have a good rest of the weekend and good rest of the day as well. Uh, let's catch up in the next session. Thank you. Bye-bye.